This is my cyclotorotor drone. It hovers around like any other multi-rotor drone, but it can translate forward and backward without needing to physically rotate like a regular drone due to the unique thrust vectoring ability of the cyclorotor. I really want to test the cyclorotor at much higher inflow speeds, so we're going to design and build some easier to assemble 3D printed rotors and slap them on an airplane to see how it flies. I'll also compare the cyclorotor to a more conventional propeller with some benchtop thrust tests later on in this video. But first, let's quickly recap on how a cyclorotor generates thrust. The blades rotate around the horizontal axis and pitch once per revolution so that the relative angle of attack is always positive. This generates an upwards thrust force. A disadvantage of this design is that, at two locations around the rotation, the blades are experiencing drag but not producing any useful lift, unlike the blades at the top and the bottom. But let's change the thrust vector to be horizontal for more screen space and let the rotor accelerate sideways so there's airflow into it, like a propeller on an airplane. The leading and trailing blades are still producing a forward thrust force, but now the lower advancing blade is acting like a wing and providing an upward lift force. If the rotor tip speed matches the forward airflow velocity, then this top blade effectively sees no net airspeed and produces almost no drag. Suddenly the cyclorotor is much more efficient and is producing a lift force in addition to the forward propulsive force. This is a very useful tool for a VTOL aircraft to maintain control through all flight regimes. My last cyclorotor design was pretty hard to manufacture which is why the original cyclocopter only had two cyclorotors plus a regular propeller in the nose. This time I wanted a design that I could 3D print so I could make a lot of them more easily. I don't plan on releasing the 3D print files, but there's certainly a number that could convince me otherwise if it goes up enough. Anyways, I went through a few different designs, though they each had their own problems. This one was direct drive to reduce transmission noise, but needed a cam design to pitch the blades that ended up having too much friction and added even more noise. This one used a belt drive and had the blades fixed at the center, but the 3D printed arms ended up being too bendy. So after a lot of iterating and 3D printing, I landed back on a design similar to the original, but scaled down to work with a standard racing drone motor. Unlike my last, this design is belt driven, which will hopefully eliminate the annoying noise from the nylon gear and brass pinion on the first version. Just listen to how annoying this sounds with the gear transmission. I think we can bring this noise level down with the belt drive. All of the parts were printed in solid PETG filament on my Ender 3 printer and I used a few different size bearings press fit into the parts, which was so satisfying. The blades are hand cut from foam with a 2mm carbon spar insert and I sanded them down to a rough airfoil shape. The parts all slide on the main 4mm carbon shaft, which doesn't actually spin. The rotor end plates spin around this shaft, while the shaft itself is geared to a servo to rotate and change the thrust vector direction. The belt drive gives a 7 to 1 reduction from the 1750 kV racing drone motor which I'm powering with the 4 cell LiPo battery. Before designing an airplane to put this rotor on, I needed to better understand how it compares to a regular propeller in terms of performance. Full disclosure here, this test is definitely not a fair comparison between the cyclorotor and a propeller. First, I spent almost no time optimizing the cyclorotor design to its full potential. Second, the rotor design itself is so vastly different that it's hard to even compare standard measures of performance, which were all originally derived based on a conventional rotor anyways. So these test results are purely qualitative to very loosely compare between the two. With that said, let's take a look at some of the data. At low throttle, my cyclorotor produces a bit more thrust and looks to be beating the propeller. But at higher throttle and RPM, it levels off and produces quite a bit less thrust. This leveling out trend doesn't really follow any of the general aerodynamic rules for propulsion, so I'll come back to this in a second. This plot gives us a better idea of efficiency. For the same power draw, the propeller is producing quite a bit more thrust, which isn't surprising for my highly unoptimized cyclorotor design. Looking at power loading versus throttle tells us how much power it takes to generate a given thrust. We want to maximize thrust and minimize power, so larger values of power loading are better. And you can see my cyclorotor falls short compared to the propeller. But there's that weird dip at 30% throttle, about the same throttle setting where the thrust plot oddly leveled off at. My best guess is that my fragile foam blades start to bend at higher RPM where aerodynamic and centrifugal forces are much higher. Bending the blades requires power from the motor, but their effective angle of attack is reduced when they bend, so they produce much less thrust for the same power. I'm happy enough with these results to move on, but in the next cyclorotor design I'll be sure to stiffen the blades up, maybe with some carbon fiber. 
Although the power loading and general efficiency is comparatively worse for my cyclorotor design, that doesn't mean it's entirely useless as a propulsion system. Jet engines are extremely inefficient compared to helicopter rotors for hovering, but at much higher cruising speeds, jet engines make much more sense for efficiency. The cyclorotor is simply another option in the design space that could be useful, and in some cases better, for certain applications. One area the cyclorotor beats the propeller is in rotor noise produced, which is far lower in volume and less annoying than a propeller. Just listen. I would much rather hear this fly overhead than this. With the testing out of the way, it was finally time to design an airplane to put the cyclorotors on, so I drew up this simple design with two cyclorotors at the front and got to building. Little did I know, I accidentally recreated one of the original historical cycloplane designs, but this one never flew. So let's take mine out and see how it flies. Please work. I actually 3D printed some new stiffer blades with lightweight PLA filament that produced some more thrust, but I didn't get a chance to test them on the thrust stand before I found a day to fly between my job and the weather. And you're about to see why I wasn't able to collect data after the maiden flights, so stay tuned for that. Oh, I got a RC car friend over there. Mine's cooler. That awful sound is one of the belts slipping on the cyclorotors. Uh, I had a lot of trouble getting a good belt tension, especially when going from inside to outside in the freezing cold. Oh wow, the belts are so loose. <laughs> the belt is so loose. Oh, and I think I smell burning. It might be, might be burning out the motor with the loose belt. Oh, that's that's not a good smell. That smells very warm. Despite the belt tension issue, I was really impressed with the short takeoff and lower throttle it required once up to speed in the air. So I retensioned the belt on the loose cyclorotor and lined up for another flight. Oh my god. That wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> there's so many parts. There's some blades. There's probably some bearings scattered around here. That piece is probably important. And there's the plane. I can't say this was the ending that I wanted for the cycloplane, but uh, I learned a lot in the process and that was what I initially set out to do in the beginning. So mission accomplished on that front. I think I'm gonna take a break from the cyclorotor for now. Uh, I've got some other projects that need my attention, but in the meantime, I do wanna point you toward my buddy Jude, who has been working on a cyclorotor of his own, and he's got some really interesting uh, development over on his channel, so I'll link that down below. Uh, definitely check it out, it's really good stuff. But like I said, I, I learned a lot about this rotor, and uh, especially how it performs in forward flight, which hasn't really been studied much, so, uh, Definitely be on the lookout for more flying aircraft with cycloidal rotor propulsion in the future. Cheers. So maybe the cyclorotor isn't the next generation of airplane propulsion, but maybe it just needs some more tweaking and optimizing to get just right. Let me know in the comments what you think about it, and if you like this video, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future projects.